What is going on guys, it is Devon Over Crime, back again with some more DMC5 coverage. Now today's video is basically going to be covering the new Dengeki Online interview that again featured Itsuno, the director of the game, as well as Matt Walker and Okabe, who both act as producers for DMC5. As with most of the interviews we've got up until this point, uh, they seem to retread a lot of the same old, same old ground, whilst throwing in some new information here or there just to spruce up the weight for Gamescom. So without further ado, let's just dive right in. So they kick things off by stating that DMC5's development started one year before DMC4 SE's release. Uh, so at this point that would mean the game has roughly been in development for about four years. If so, that makes it the longest development time for a DMC game. Again, we got this on the E3 stage when Itsuno himself stated that he'd been waiting uh, to tell us about this for four years. Nothing really new there, just reiterating. Um, but again, for those who don't know, that is the longest development time. They dive right in to saying that the RE engine, which was obviously made for Resident Evil, um, it debuted with Resident Evil 7, uh, they basically specialized that engine uh, and tuned it for making action games, which is why they've been able to get this photorealistic look at 60 frames a second. They discuss the fact that DMC5's reception worldwide, both you know domestically in Japan and internationally in the rest of the world, has been very, very positive, and that they're very happy with the views the trailer and the website have received. Which is a given, considering it's been 10 years since we got an actual sequel to DMC4, so everybody's on the edge of their fucking seat waiting for this game. Then we come to find out that Itsuno was basically given free reign with DMC5. Whether that means he was given a blank check or just, you know, basically full creative input, who knows. But the fact that now Itsuno is no longer bound by budget as well as time constraints means that he can finally go all in. Considering he joined DMC2 basically as that ship was sinking. Uh, and DMC3 was sort of made with a redemption in mind and obviously DMC4 was just a complete mess DMC5 is his first DMC where he can basically just go all out they then go on to discuss how they want mass appeal for this game which obviously makes sense they want this thing to sell like hotcakes um, so they go and talk about how they've been mindful because um, obviously certain countries aren't very big fans of certain things like exposing too much skin yada 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 this and that so you know rip coatless fucking costumes nah just kidding but they um they said that they've decided to focus on making the characters in the game beautiful through photorealism and making it you know marketable to everybody so you know they don't have tits and ass fucking everywhere which you know makes sense obviously some people disagree with Nico, but that you know they could have gone far worse and pulled a Gloria on us and thankfully they haven't. They again t talk about how DMC5 is basically a direct sequel to DMC4 but they don't specify exactly how many years it's been but then again if we go back to the previous interview they did state that it was several years so it has been quite a while. They mentioned that Nero's haircut um, is basically there to visually represent the fact that he's sort of grown up which makes sense you know you're not gonna see some dude you know mid 20s or you know early 30s whatever with crazy unkempt hair you know he's gone for the shorter look some people say it's um, sort of reminiscent to DMC Dante the reboots haircut personally I don't really see it it's just a fucking haircut um, but then they do discuss um, that Dante's unkempt unshaven manner is for a reason. Um, again, we learned that in the previous interview, um, Dante's been missing, gone wild, um, but not without reason. So again, that's just sort of reiterating, retreading that sort of comment. Again, obviously, people seem to think that this whole Dante's unkempt and unshaven because he's been in fucking hell for years, following on from DMC2. Um, and you know, that is obviously the leading theory, but again, nothing has been confirmed. So take that as you will. They then go on to talk about the creation of the Nico character. Um, they decided to try and make her likable, um, which, you know, there's been a mass uh, positive reception. Obviously, some people don't like her. She's a bit cheesy. Um, but they do hint that she might have her own individual story 
or you know sort of side story that might tie into the main campaign. They then go on to discuss the character of V <coughs> or Vitali, v Vitale, whatever you want to fucking say, given by some 4chan leaks and whatnot. Um, I'm just going to address him as V because again nothing's been confirmed. And at this point everybody knows him by V and it's a lot easier to talk about him in that sort of way. So they discuss V um, basically in an ambiguous nature because they don't want to say too much about who he or she may be. But they do discuss the fact that V does not have a weapon on him in the key art. Um, and they do sort of say that there's going to be a moment throughout the game where you understand why that is. Which, you know, is fairly interesting. Um, some people have pointed out that on the key art he has some sort of rapier or some sort of cane staff. We don't know, but it sort of does make sense if you look at the other leak which says, you know, he's some sort of sorcerer that can summon enemies. Um, you know, the fact that he can't use... It doesn't have any weapons and, you know, he he's not using them in gameplay makes sense. But, again, they didn't really say much more than that because they want to keep this under wraps until Gamescom. They then go on to discuss Kidie for basically a very, very brief moment. Um, when asked about her, they basically tease that something has happened to her, but again, they're not saying much. Obviously, we hear Nero scream for her in the initial trailer, the reveal trailer, um, but again, that could have been some subtle messing about with voice clips and whatnot. Um, we don't know. Uh, I don't think they fridged her. Um, because Nero just seems a bit too bright and happy in the trailer. I mean, obviously, if she was fucking fridged by Virgil, not only would he not be, he'd be beyond fucking redemption, but I'm pretty sure Nero would fucking go all depressed on us and, you know, Sasuke fucking mode, weeb, tear trash. Um, but again, they say something's happened to her, but they're not saying much, and I'm assuming because they want this to be under wraps until Gamescom. Which is a recurring theme in every single interview we get. Just wait till Gamescom, guys. Which, you know, I would say fuck it, give it to us now. But considering we've got, what, less than a month till Gamescom, I'm happy with fucking waiting. Itsuno then goes on to reiterate what he said in an interview a few years back about how the DMC universe only features the human world and hell. There is no heaven. He stresses that the, ga the enemies you fight in the game are in fact demons and that's it. There is no angels, there's no none of that. It's a pretty bleak and depressing world where you have nothing to look forward to in the afterlife but a lifetime of misery and pain in fucking hell. But again, for those who wanted that um, tie-in with Bayonetta, unfortunately that's not going to happen because heaven doesn't fucking exist. They then segue back into gameplay tidbits where they again mention that the Devil Breaker that Nero has equipped will break when attacked. Now I'm assuming this means it will break when repeatedly attacked. I'm not sure if it will break after one attack or several, um, but it's basically done because Nico sort of prefers to focus on performance rather than stability. So it's basically like a glass fucking cannon. You can output mass amounts of fucking power, but the moment you get hit, it's fucking done. So there's that story tie-in as to why the things just keep breaking on you. And as to why Nico is travelling around with Nero, because obviously she's having to repair everything 24-7 because he's breaking shit. But then again it acts as an incentive to get good, because if you don't get hit, it doesn't break and you can keep just dunking on fools like they're nothing. They then go on to say that the Blue Rose um, will have different types of bullets. So obviously the Blue Rose is Nero's hand cannon. Um, you know, DMC4, its debut, you could see even in the initial fight with Dante and DMC4 that the, the, the gun shot two bullets. <clears throat> and obviously a little bit of backstory on Blue Rose, basically Nero made it because the idea of a gun firing two fucking bullets simultaneously is impossible to the human fucking mind, but he goes out and fucking does it because of his rebellious streak. Now, the fact that it will shoot different bullets, you know, having different types of ammunition, is interesting, but they then go and say that they should tr check the trailer um, and see, see for ourselves. That's fucking crazy because I never picked up on it. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to dive back into the trailer and take a look. The interviewer then jokingly asks about the inclusion of Devil Trigger in DMC5, and Itsuno jokes, you know, of course, the 
the trailer song is called Devil Trigger, you know, Nero's theme is called Devil Trigger, um, so why wouldn't it be included? But then he re reiterates on what Matt Walker said, and that is that we should go look through the music video for some more hints. Um, for those of you who don't know, Matt Walker a couple weeks back said that whilst we did a good job um, looking through the Devil Trigger music video, there's something that we haven't picked up on, um, as if you needed enough uh, incentive. Now here's where things start to get a little bit juicy. So we come to find out that the game will just have a traditional mission system with apparently small differences that um, people will enjoy. What that means we don't know, um, other than the fact that the traditional mission system is back in, which makes sense if the game is meant to be rank run or time attacked or and whatnot. If you want to get a better score, uh, you want easy replayability, it makes sense. You don't want a God of War 2018 situation where if you want to replay just a certain segment you have to replay the entire fucking game. I mean that's not to say that the world won't be massive and extensive uh, and sort of open world to an extent we don't know um, but the mission structure is back and you know I'm glad because they could have gone open world and they could have fucking bloated it up and it could have been a collectathon and terrible um, but it's soon as bringing back some structure uh, and they said that there will be differences, so it won't just be the same old, same old. Obviously the, the gameplay loop, I hope, will be different. Um, I mean, obviously we've seen the return of those red doors, which basically block entry until you clear the room. Um, but yeah, who knows? Who knows? Just please don't give us any more fucking Beyblade spinning tops. And please don't give us any crazy disappearing platforms. And for the love of God, don't give us any fucking dice. You know, if there's one thing, just no fucking dice. No dice. Sort of tying in with the mission structure nonsense, they do confirm that the whole Red Orb upgrade system will be back, which, great, you know, don't fix what ain't fucking broke, but they said that they're going to introduce something new for this game as well, which, again, is it going to be a replacement for Proud Soul or something else? We don't know. Obviously, with the inclusion of Nico, things are bound to be different. Uh, as well as the fact that Nero's got that crazy arm, but maybe they're going to introduce something new for Dante. Who knows? They then go on to fully confirm, for everybody who doubts, that Devil May Cry 5 will be first and foremost Nero's story. They go on to say that Dante and this third character V will also play an important role, but Nero is the focus. It sooner then goes on to say that he hopes the story will get the player emotional um, with some potential for some tearing up you know he wants people to be deeply moved um, as he says which makes sense if this game is touted as the end of the son of Sparta storyline um, Dante's character is pretty much done there's not much he can do I mean he's taken revenge on Mundus for basically ruining his goddamn family you know, he shows up in DMC4 basically clowning around, messing about, not taking anything seriously. There's only so much growth his character can have. Obviously, he's probably going to get serious for this game, but they are setting up the series for Nero to sort of take over as the main character. He's a lot younger, you know, he's a lot rough around the edges, uh, he's got more potential for growth, um, but, you know, I hope that well, whatever they do past DMC5, uh, we'll still get some inclusion of the old cast. Also, this whole idea of moving and touching moments in the game are going to be interesting. I mean, we got the final moment that Nero and Dante share where, you know, Nero asks if they'll ever meet again. Um, and, you know, 10 years on, it's, it's crazy. No doubt we'll probably get some sort of you know, devils never cry, it's only the rain sort of nonsense, but you know, that's to be expected. Who knows, maybe we'll even get I should have filled your dark soul with light moments, but yeah, that remains to be seen. One final small tidbit, I guess, to go over. Apparently, Nero's coat, which obviously they had to create and build before they scanned it in, apparently cost them the price of a small car, which is fucking insane. It's Itsuna going all out with that blank check, basically fucking the budget Kojima style. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Again, I'd just like to give a shout out to the DMC5 Info Twitter account, as well as the S Sesha member, um, who I believe is also on Twitter. 
and era I believe they are the ones who basically did the translation for this so us non weeb Japanese speaking people can enjoy all this glorious information Gamescom is just around the corner and that is when we will be able to get our hands on this game um, I'm looking forward to it this has been running on for about 15 minutes now um, but it was worth it that was quite an extensive interview uh, so I want to thank you guys for watching and yeah, I guess I'll see you guys next video.